torque is achieved on all five engines. And uh, each of these things weighs several tons, and they, they operate like a lever. And as soon as a commit is made to launch, all of them will uh, fly back at once and uh, it'll let go. That's, the, that's a camera directly below the uh, nozzles of the engines. That camera is down in a, uh, what's called And uh, we see a picture from that camera for about, oh, one or two seconds after ignition, and then it gets a little cloudy. That's all. <laughs> <coughs> the decision to uh, let this monster, 36-story tall rocket, weighing over six million pounds, I guess on its uh, six and a half million pounds, Saturn V, the decision to let those hooks go at its base when it's all, all those engines are thrusting is taken by a computer. Uh, things happen so quickly then that the computer is the only piece of machinery that is trustworthy to make those decisions in that amount of time. So the final decision is, although I'm, it can be overridden by man, is really made by a machine, which demonstrates the complexity of many of the things that are going on here. Do we, do we have a moment I can explain the sequence of that? I just sure. talked to, to a man about it because I had a question. The impulse to fire the engines is given at 8.9 seconds before the liftoff. The center engine is fired first, and then two outer engines and two more outer engines, and all, all of them begin to fire within about a second or a little more. And then during the next four seconds, they're watching pressures build up so that we're now about four seconds from liftoff. They have pressure sensors to determine whether the engines are up to full thrust. And unless all five engines are running at 90% of thrust, it will automatically shut down. Or the launch controller, if he sees something else going wrong, or if he can see a direct readout, he'll shut them all down and then uh, they try to find out what's wrong. But in a period of less than nine seconds, they make a tremendously complex uh, decision to lift off. Now we're going to go to Mission Control and uh, Jack King. Five minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Uh, we're still go. Just uh, we're about to come up with some status checks now to determine the final status. In the meantime, uh, the moon module test conductor, Fritz Wydeck, has come in over the circuit and informed the spacecraft commander, Dave Scott, the lunar module Falcon and the rover are go. Dave Scott uh, thanked him for this and uh, then also received a report from spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin that the command ship, which will be have the call, call sign Endeavor, also is go. We've just completed our status reports and the launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, the launch director, Walt Kaplian, and the mission director, Chet Lee, all have given their goals. We're standing by for the swing arm to retract to its full fallback position. It's moving now as we approach the five-minute mark in the count. Coming up on the five-minute mark. Mark, T-minus, five minutes and counting. We're go on Apollo 15. This is Kennedy Launch Control. And so the access arms that they have to that rocket are now moving back. And uh, in about two minutes, a little bit less, the automatic sequence of the firing command will begin. All this immensely complicated work going on down here by computers that were unimaginable 21 years ago. And it was 21 years ago this week that they had the first rocket fired from this part of the world, from this installation. It was a very small event. It was a German V-2. Mm -hmm. The launch tower was a painter's ladder. And the launch pad was an 11-foot thick concrete chunk. Uh, there was a lighthouse here, which was the only thing they had to w observe it from. But it went off, and it went 200 miles downrange, and somebody said, you know, maybe there's a future in that. And we come now to this enormous complex of men and machines and fuel and everything else that we find here at Cape Kennedy now. And in John? three minutes and 52 seconds, uh, John, we'll see Apollo 15 go. John, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Is that lighthouse still there? Can you see it from where you are now? Yes, I can't see it from here, but the lighthouse is still down here. Right, let me tell you a funny story. Let me tell you what. Okay. okay. <laughs> we used to have a lot of fun. John, you probably remember this. <laughs> Mission Control coming up with it now. Let's go to Mission Control and get an announcement. This is Kennedy Launch Control. We've just passed three minutes, 30 second mark in the count. The terminal sequencer has been armed and we are go. Launch Operations Manager Paul Donnelly just wished the crew good luck and Godspeed and received an expression of thanks from all three crew members. We'll be coming up shortly on the automatic sequence. 
Three minutes, ten seconds. Firing command enabled. Firing command on. We have the firing command. We're now on the automatic sequence. And the tanks in the three stages of the Saturn V that contain those propellants will begin to pressurize. The countdown is still proceeding, and we're at now two, two minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. We understand there's an estimate that there are more than a million people in the area here to view the launch. The traffic has been heavy since 2 o'clock this morning. The beaches are packed and the roads are packed. Two minutes, 35 seconds, and counting. We're monitoring our status board here in firing room one. Our uh, ready lights are on, concerned with spacecraft, emergency detection system, instrument units. Uh, preparations are complete, and uh, the automatic sequence is continuing. Two minutes, 20 seconds, and counting. Liquid oxygen and eyes uh, pressurized as the countdown continues. Coming up from the two-minute mark, we'll be standing by for the cue ball cover to be retracted shortly atop the Saturn V vehicle. Mark, T minutes, two minutes, T minus two minutes and counting, still going well. Propellant stable on board the vehicle. The crew here in the firing room monitoring uh, more than 300 red line values, watching temperatures and pressures to ensure they do not go above nominal. In the case that it did, uh, any one of these uh, key people could call in to hold the countdown. One minute, uh, 36 seconds and counting, still going well. The pressurization sequence is still continuing in the vehicle. 